Good morning and welcome to another live group devotional as several of us are walking through Stories of Faith, James from the Bible.com, UVerse app. And today we have James 4, 15 through 17. Now, initially, I'm going to read this in the ESV version, and I have some guests here with me. And then I'm going to read it in the MSG version, which is the Message Bible. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is a sin. Again, that was James 4, 15 through 17 in ESV. And before I share my thoughts, perspective, and what I think God is telling me and uh, the Holy Spirit wants me to convey to you, I'm going to turn it over to either our guest here, Bibbers again, and Craig. So either one of you, what are your thoughts of today's verses? Well, I think, you know, some of my first initial thoughts on this is just encouraging us to not be arrogant, you know, about what we plan to do or want to do. I think, you know, somewhere else in the Bible, it says that, you know, the day belongs to the Lord and we are in his hands and in his control. And you couple that up with what James says here, you know, it's, it's pretty arrogant of us to think, well, I'm going to go to, you know, such and such a town and do business. We just need to remember that we need to start each day really dedicating that day to God, realizing that we're in his hands. Amen. How about you, Babers? Yeah, I had a couple of thoughts on this passage and really liked, uh, I've got my James MacArthur study Bible here, and there's just several things that I was reading about this last night. I think, Craig, I really like what you were saying about just being, just boasting and about being arrogant. And I guess really, I think it's almost that we're anticipating without even asking the Lord into the planning process. So I think it's just, you know, we're, we're expecting this great outcome when we haven't even asked God to come into any of the process. So we're just assuming we're going to receive something without asking. I also thought about another verse that really has always been one of my favorites on this. But first, before I start that or kind of even finish that thought, I wanted to share something that my, my, my Bible said. It was talking about the implication is that they also did what they shouldn't do. So sins of omission lead directly to sins of commission. So it, it was just really interesting to me and how, you know, those two things, when we're not asking God or even just assuming something and we're openly doing what we may even know is completely wrong or evil. And then um, I wanted to go back to Proverbs 19.21. This is, a, I've always loved this verse. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel will stand. Mm. And so I just really also that really struck me. You know, we can have all kinds of plans and I don't think there's anything wrong with having plans. I think it's when we have plans and choose to execute them. And then the second step is even when we know it might be wrong, we do it anyway. And we never even invite the Lord into counsel or plans. So those were some thoughts. Yeah, I like that, Craig <clears throat> and Bibbers. I like yesterday, I believe you talked about, do we, you know, invite the Lord into our day? You know, like we, we have these daily word and prayer times, and that's inviting the Lord, but specifically asking, Lord, will you be with me through this day? I'm inviting you into my day, my activities, my work, my life, my engagement with my friends. I like that. Now, these verses, although two verses, to me, says a lot. But I did want to share the message version of this. And when I pull up the message version in the Bible.com UVerse app, it goes back to James 13. So I'm going to read James 13 through 17. Now, if our viewers or listeners aren't familiar with the message version, it is a much more contemporary version, uses a lot of kind of modern slang and tones. But I'm going to read this out loud, 13 through 17. And now I have a word for you who brashly announced today at the latest tomorrow, we're off to such and such a city for the year. We're going to start a business and make a lot of money. 
You don't know the first thing about tomorrow. You're nothing but a wisp of fog catching a brief bit of sun before disappearing. Instead, make it a habit to say, if the master wills it and we're still alive, we'll do this or that. As it is, you are full of your grandiose selves. All such vaunting self-importance is evil. In fact, if you know the right thing to do and don't do it, that for you is evil. So that's a mouthful in verses. Uh, but with me, I think this is saying a, a, a few things, right? Don't be arrogant and saying, I'll do this or that, or the tone of procrastination. Because here in the message, it says today, at the latest tomorrow, we're off to such and such city for the year. So I believe to me, and what has been speaking to me in these verses, the Holy Spirit speaking to me, is that one is we shouldn't procrastinate, right? If God wills it. God tells us if we're being obedient and what the word is saying, what the Holy Spirit is saying, don't haste, go ahead and do it and get it done. Don't wait for tomorrow. We're like a, what, what is the message Bible says? You're nothing but a wisp of fog catching, awesome. a, brief, yeah, catching a brief bit of sun before disappearing. So uh, I have a little confession to make. I'm kind of a procrastinator sometimes, right? I'll, you know, I'll, I'll say I'm going to do this or that, and I plan, and then I <clears throat> put it off. I have these projects and some other projects more important or this or that. Now I think I'm relatively organized, um, but you know I can get off task and I'll I'll put things uh, later. But I, to me, these verses are saying don't procrastinate. Don't waste time. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. Go ahead and get her done. You know, if there's someone you want to say you love, someone that doesn't know Christ, someone that needs this message, someone that needs to hear your personal story of redemption, don't put it off. Don't waste. We don't know what tomorrow brings. And don't be arrogant about time, right? We, we, we don't know how much time we have, and time is priceless and precious, right? But these last verse here, and in the ESV says, as it is, you are full of your grandiose selves, all such vaunting self-importance is evil. In fact, if you know the right thing to do and don't do it, that for you is a sin. It's evil. So if we as believers know what to do, what we ought to do, and we don't do it, James is saying it's a sin. So what are your thoughts on the MSG version of, of this and what I shared with you too? You know, that's kind of humbling. And, and I think it's, again, it's not the point of whether you're hasty in doing something or whether you procrastinate in doing something. It's, you know, whether or not you've committed it to the Lord, whether or not you're trusting him, you know, because either way, if you go hastily without waiting upon God, or if you procrastinate, I'm, I'm terrible at that too, you know, that, you know, it's just like when we've put things off, we're not really, or, or we haven't, you know, asked God, or we haven't spoken with God, we haven't prayed about a situation. I guess I'm reminded back to um, Proverbs 3, you know, Proverbs seems to be where we always end up. In fact, I was reading something the other day that said, James is kind of like a New Testament version of Proverbs, because there's a lot of sayings that are all kind of tied together there. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. You know, that again, that idea in all of your way, you know, whether it's something you need to get to right away or whether it's something that you are waiting upon the Lord about, you've got to learn to trust in God in all your ways. He's everything, doesn't it? Amen. Amen. Yeah, I agree, Craig. A lot of folks, at least Christians and some pastors, and you know, you have them sign your Bible. I don't know if you guys do that at your churches, but if you get a new Bible, you, you should have your pastor sign in. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 is written in there. And I agree. And sometimes I don't think that, right, to invite God to acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord, acknowledge him, and he will guide your paths, right? So yeah, sometimes I, I don't do that. And I tease Bibbers here when we're together, hang out. She'll she'll be praying or talking out loud. <laughs> She's like, who are you talking to? I'm talking to God. I'm asking him for help. And you know, whether we're uh, exercising and going that last mile, she'll <laughs> say that. But, but that that's that's sweet and it's humorous of what she says, but but you're it's right. For real. <laughs> it's for real. Yeah. We should. I mean, I'm guilty of not always doing that and, and speaking to God. 
we should and not trust again, right? We we have that human nature. We we want to control and do this or that, or we should go to this town and start this business, maybe today or tomorrow, right? But you're right on key there. Proverbs tying into James, maybe James being the New Testament uh, Proverbs. Trust in the Lord. Invite him in, right? Be it your will, God. Let's do this. And and don't be hasteful and don't procrastinate. Ask him what your his will is. Pray about it and go towards what he's leading. But I cannot get over the last few verses there, which, you know, last two verses, which we could probably talk for a while. And I'm going to go back to, to the ESV here or in 17. This really lands home. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is a sin. What do we know the right thing? How do we know what the right thing is? Well, Proverbs is the book of wisdom, the book of discernment, right? And both James and Proverbs says, if you lack wisdom, ask God and he'll give it abundantly. So we should know what to do, say, think, react, or not react. And if we don't do it, it's a sin. So I just think of some of the wrongs in this world, some of the, I don't watch a lot of news, but things happening, things leading down a certain path. And as we approach the end days, and I'm, I'm not talking, you know, doom here, we also know who the winner is in the last days. But if we know what's right to do, if we know we should be doing these devotionals, which we are, if we know we should be praying daily, daily word and prayer time, if we know we should be taking our friends and family to church, if we know we should be leading and walking others to Christ, seeing more ink added to the land book of life, and we do not, then are we not sinning as James says? What's your thoughts on that? <laughs> Yeah, you both of you have mentioned something, um, and this is taking me back. Um, Sunday, we were at MCC Church, and um, just shout out to Mike, but a great message on Sunday. And Don, something you had just mentioned, you know, knowing what's right and wrong. I think also the book of James is really all about, you know, thought and words, just, you know, our tongue. And I think this is reminding me, you know, when we have a plan and whether the plan is in Christ or whether the plan is on our own, we're thinking and processing that plan. And a lot of times we're actually speaking with others about plans. And, and I think this really ties back to, you know, so a man thinks, so he shall speak. And so I, I really like what you just said, Don, about, you know, just really kind of processing that and bringing our friends along and people in our processing and plans. We really need to stop even prior to planning and just really be in prayer, right? And so- yeah. I, I, I really think this really goes back to where are we camping in our mind and with our words? And if we're camping in the right spot, then normally it's we're usually going to, you know, always want to bring the Lord into our plans because our, our hearts are in the right spot mm -hmm. and we're thinking and speaking and in our hearts, knowing that every good and perfect gift comes down from the father of lights for those who are in Christ Jesus. So I, I really think if, if I know in my heart that every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord, do I not want to take my plans to him in advance? Do I not want to be thinking about my thoughts and even backtracking and saying, Lord, even be with me before I even speak. And so help me, Lord, to have the right words to say. Help me, Lord, before I have this conversation and this meeting of what I'm going to bring this big plan to everybody about. Help me, Lord. I really want to have plans to, you know, grow my business or go to a different country or state or whatever. Help me prior to even thinking and speaking about those plans. I'm taking everything to you with open hands. Well, and, you know, and I take it a little bit further too, when I read really like that verse there, verse 17, you know, it's kind of humbling because a lot of times we, we build up some pride because we don't sin. And well, I haven't cussed anybody out today. I haven't uh, gotten mad. I haven't gotten, uh, or I haven't, you know, done this. I haven't done that. You know, I haven't done any of these big things that we traditionally associate with sin. You know, this just kind of boils it down to knowing what's, what's right and not doing it. That's, that too is sin. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, when we just fail to do the right thing, whether it's something in haste, whether it's something we've procrastinated about, you know, it's just kind of, you know, whatever we've done, if we, or whatever we haven't done, that we know that we should do, that too is sin. So don't get too 
big a hat on yourself. Just remember that we're all not perfect. And, and so therefore, we need to be on our toes. We need to be on our guard. We need to be trusting God, trusting him in everything. I can't qualify that, you know, everything any more than just to say everything does mean everything. Mm -hmm. Lord, with all your heart. Amen. Amen. I like how you approach that. Craig, right? You know, people say, well, I'm a good person. You know, I, I I go to church or I do this. I, you know, I obey the Ten Commandments. But the thing of point is, it's humbling, like you said, to know to do what is right and do it not. It's a sin. James is calling it a sin. While you're talking, I'm thinking and and I'm thinking what you know Jesus said to Peter when he came back. He says, Peter, do you love me? Well, Peter goes, Well, yes, Jesus, I love you. And Jesus says it again, Peter, do you love me? And he's like, yes, Jesus, I do. And each time, each reply, Jesus says the same thing. Feed my sheep, feed my sheep. Third time Jesus asked it again. I love reading in the book, The Beautiful Outlaw. It shows kind of a more of a humorous, very uh, approachable side of Jesus. And he asks again, Peter, do you love me? At this point, Peter's getting a little perturbed. Well, Yes, Jesus, of course I do. I just, you know, basically told you twice that Jesus says, feed my sheep. What is he saying about feed my sheep? He's saying, feed the people, the word of God, nurture, live, love, teach as I did. And if we're not striving for that to speak, lead, right, teach, preach, love, and live as Jesus did, then are we not sinning? Because what did Jesus God incarnated to man said to Peter, what did he say? The greatest commandment is love the Lord God with all your heart, your mind, you know, and your strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. If we're, And that's the greatest commandments. Jesus says that. That's the greatest of commandments, saying all the law and the prophet. If we are not doing that, are we not sinning? If we know what to do is right, you know, whether we procrastinate, right, or we're too hastily, we move too fast without inviting God into it and praying about it, allowing him to lead us, and we know what to do if we don't do it. That's the saying. If we don't help our neighbor that's hurting, we see someone weeping in church in the spirit saying, well, I need to come over there and pray for them, right? And you're like, oh, well, I don't have time. I got to do this or that, right? Well, isn't that a sin? Because your Holy Spirit's calling you to pray for someone, your spiritual gifts. If you're not using your time, talents, and treasure for the kingdom, is that not a sin? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that, you do? Well, like I said, you know, that's just becomes a very humbling thing, you know, that that happens. We just, like I said, we sometimes we just get so proud of ourselves, you know, that we we didn't commit you know one of the you know one of the big 10 and yet maybe something just so small as like you say you know going to pray for somebody or pray with somebody that you see crying and, and you know the lord speaks to your heart and you say ah eh, later you know i don't have time right now that becomes really just as big of a sin as if we'd have done one of the other things. Because after all, you know, sin is sin. You know, there's no shades of gray in sin. You know, sin is this simple disobedience to God. And whether it's a, you know, a big thing or, or, or what we qualify as a little thing. We sometimes we just we need to humble ourselves and realize that if we're going to call ourselves Christians and we're going to follow God, then we need to follow him in all things. Amen. So thanks for joining me, Bibbers and Craig. We're going to wrap this up. Uh, although these are just a couple verses or where the MSG version takes it two more, like the 13, a lot is there in just a couple, two to four verses and speaking to all three of us a different way in a different perspective, but it comes to light and unison right here on, on these verses to be humble, to let God guide our past, to invite him in and to do what is right. And if we don't, right, James says it's a sin. So thanks for joining us, listener and viewers. And I want to encourage you that I want to inspire you to launch each day with purpose, navigate with principles, and explore with passion.